Okay, I'm ready. It's your interview. Gummy bears or gummy worms? <laughs> Do you like them? I love them. Worms. Worms. Bears are for anybody. But will you rather be a flag or a jawbreaker? <laughs> uh, a jawbreaker, because people will carry me in their pockets, and then when they're sitting oh. someplace and they need some entertainment, I'll be there. No, listen. Will you will you rather be a flag? A flag. Jawbreaker. Or a jawbreaker, I'm telling you. You mean like the kind of jawbreakers you eat? Yes. Yeah, I'd rather be a jawbreaker. But a flag, no one's going to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. What kind of jawbreaker do you think I would be? What flavor? Crybaby? <laughs> Crybaby jawbreaker? Crybaby jawbreaker? That's me. You nailed me. You nailed me. Now, would you rather be a flag, really? Yes. Why? Because no one's going to eat me. Right. Mm -mm. They'll wave you around at parades. Yeah, but they won't eat me. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You, you're very practical. You are. You're good. I'm mm -hmm. seven years old, Miss Diane. What did you do for fun when you were seven? Oh, my. Well, it was just yesterday, of course, when I was seven. You know what I really did for fun? I had friends who lived on the same street I lived on, and where I lived, we had what we thought was this giant forest. And we would go in this giant forest and we would make up plays and adventures. And you know what, I went back home, you know how big the forest was? Yeah. Four trees. Yeah. <laughs> but when I was seven, I thought it was the biggest forest I'd ever seen. That's what I used to do. I used to make up plays. Do you ever make up plays? When I was three and five. Oh. When you were seven, you were much too old to make up plays, of course, right? What was your favorite subject? In school? Yes. Reading. Because I love to read books. And I love to read the ending of the book first to see if I'm going to be happy or not. And if I'm going to be happy, then I love to read the book. Do you have a favorite book? Yes. What? Well, I don't really have a favorite, favorite book. Mm -hmm. What's your almost maybe sort of favorite book? That will be... Um, I'm not really sure. No, I can't think of one right now. It's hard to think of books, isn't it, like that? Did you get in trouble a lot? I got in trouble some. I did. Something I said. <laughs> I got in trouble because sometimes I'd think things were funny that the teacher didn't think was funny. Yeah. You know? To me sometimes. You too? You think it's just hilarious, and the teacher is not laughing. Mm -hmm. That's when you know you've made a big mistake. Yeah. Out of all the places in the world, why did you pick Camden, New Jersey? To meet you. <laughs> <laughs> that expression was worth just about everything. Well, we picked Camden because we get, like to go places where we can learn about people we haven't met. That's true. Yep. We like to go places where we think that sometimes people can help each other. Camden can help other people, and we can help Camden. Yeah. And isn't that great? Isn't it great sometimes when you make new friends and you didn't even know they lived in another city, but you want them as your best friend. True. What do you think Camden needs? Well, I think it needs really smart kids like you to go to school and to love their city. I think it needs all of us together making sure that there are lots of jobs in Camden for everybody. It's what every city needs, really. What, what do you think of Urban Promise? I thought Urban Promise was great. We really liked everybody so much we met there, and we love, you know what we love? Music. We love that they have a good time, don't you think? Yes. And we love that they, they like all the things that are serious, like learning, 
and like programs that teach you things, but at the same time, they want it to be a really good time. What will you say to the people who support Urban Promise? I would say support more. I would say do more and thank you. What is a promise? Ooh, what a tricky question. You're tough. That is a tough question. What is a promise? It's wanting to do something, not just with your head, but your heart, where you say, I'm going to make this happen, not just with my head, but my whole heart. So I can't at the end of the day say, oh, I didn't have time to do it, because I, I committed my heart to it. And what does it mean to keep up your promise? It means that you respect other people because you make promises to other people and sometimes it means you respect yourself because you know you make promises to yourself too, don't you think? Yes. And sometimes the promises you make to yourself are really important and that you have to say, no, I, I believe in myself enough to keep this promise and so maybe it'll be hard and maybe I'll stumble and I'll have to get back up but I'm going to get back up because I made a promise to myself. Okay. And don't you feel good when you keep a promise? Yes. It makes you feel really good. How did you feel when you were in Camden? Oh, you know, I met so many wonderful people. I felt that I was making new friends and I felt that I was learning things. And most of all, I felt that I wanted to come back. And I think I will. Are you going to be there when I come back again? Are you going to see know. me again? I don't know. I might be here. <laughs> you might be here. You might take my job and be here. I might be here looking for you. <laughs> That's true. What was your favorite memory of second grade? <gasps> my favorite memory of second grade. Okay, I can, I can almost do this. What was interesting about the third grade for me? What is it? Do you know who my teacher was? Who? My mother. Your mom? I am not kidding you. My mother taught third grade. And do you know what she did? What? When she knew I hadn't done the homework, she called on me. My own mother. She did that at school? She did that at school. She did. So next time I did my homework, because she knew I had no secrets. Can I ask you one more question? Yes. If you were going to be any animal on Earth, what animal would you be? I would be a T-Rex. A T-Rex? Really? Aren't they, aren't they like scary? No. No, you'd be a nice T-Rex? No. <laughs> well, I might be a snake. Bad snake. Python. No! A python? But they wrap themselves all around you, don't they? Yes. Because I'd be hungry a lot of times. Oh, I see. Well, let me know if you're ever a T-Rex. Or a Triceraton. Or a Triceraton. Or a python. Or a python, because I'm going to leave the country. <laughs> I'm running right out of town. <sighs> okay, so we sh should we wave goodbye to your class again? Yes. All right. Shouldn't you do the thing we do on television? You oh, know, I moonwalk? say, uh, the moonwalk? Yeah. Can you do a moonwalk? Yes. You, no, you have to show me. Can we do the, can we say goodbye as, 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 as we do the moonwalk? Yes. Goodbye, second grade. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. 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 <laughs> I have to say, no one at ABC News has ever ended an interview that way before. <laughs> Thank you, Kareem. <laughs>